The Global Food Security and Plant Biosecurity Symposium gives Southern University students and other invited universities a chance to network with scientists and professionals addressing educational, research, and career opportunities in food systems and plant and animal science. This edition of the symposium is dedicated to Dr. George Washington Carver for his contributions to global food security. Dr. Warren spoke highly of Dr. Carver's contributions to the world of plant science. Dr. Carver uh, established himself not only as a uh, plant pathologist but as a true scientist and he covered many many areas that not only uh, was he a uh, plant pathologist but he was also a chemist uh, and he worked in that and he also worked in terms of uh, uh, entomology where he, he controlled, uh, had recipes to control uh, insect diseases. As a former student of Tuskegee University, Dr. Frederick speaks on the first time he actually saw Dr. Carver. I didn't know who he was. I had not seen him and didn't, didn't recognize him. And the first time I saw him, uh, I thought he was just some, uh, some person working on the, in the grounds department because he was out there looking at some wood panels that had been painted uh, down on the, on the, on the, on the slope of a, of, of a hill. And he was wandering back and forth with his gray cap on and his gray sweater and baggy pants, uh, uh, looking at these panels with, that had been painted. And I was walking up the street with a, with a schoolmate of mine, and the schoolmate said, do you, you know who that person is down there? I said, no, I don't know who that is. He says, that's Dr. Carver. I said, that's Dr. Carver? He said, yeah, that's Dr. George Washington Carver. And that was my first sighting, really, uh, of, of, of Dr. Carver. We caught up with Dr. Collins, professor of plant science at Southern University, and he spoke about the importance of plant science and food security. Global food security and how uh, plant diseases and insect pests uh, can affect the availability of food. Um, the world has a long history of uh, plant pathogens causing uh, famine. Also, you know, we need to train the, the next generation of scientists and professionals to uh, address these issues and, and food security, uh, crop breeders, plant pathologists, to come up with answers how we control diseases. According to historical records, the South was going broke trying to raise cotton crops. The notorious insect pest, the boll weevil, was destroying the crops. Dr. Carver introduced these three alternative crops to the South, sweet potatoes, soybeans, and peanuts. After introducing these crops, his research took off and transformed Southern agriculture forever. Southern University had participating students from Florida A&M, Howard, and Penn State Universities to present their research findings. I am doing a comparative study on honeybee health in conventional and organic beekeeping. Uh, we're looking at four different aspects of honeybee health, varroa mite density, pesticide prevalence, colony strength, and a protein assay. I'm here today to talk about my finding of quinoa downy mildew for the first time in the United States. Um, and this was the first time this pathogen was reported on the United States. Special trained dog units were on hand to display how they track down certain plant pests before they arrive in the U.S. through thorough training given by the National Detector Dog Training Center in Newman, Georgia. It is very crucial that we uh, use these dogs out in the field to, to find and locate these snails because what some of these snails are doing is that they, they are um, eating away out of agricultural products. They are um, infesting um, a lot of uh, crops. So that's why it's very important for us to catch them um, at, their, at the ports. That's because that's where they usually come from. They come in at our nation's ports. Some adults may be watching this story and saying, hey, I'm not a scientist, so I can't be of assistance with this matter. Hold that thought, because Dr. Dillard of Cornell University has some advice. The first thing we need to do is really help this, the young people understand in the next generation that food starts at the ground, that it really comes from farms, it means growing things, and maybe some of that means that we need to start more um, urban gardens and more community gardens so that more people are exposed. And then I think we'd start telling them about the exciting careers that people can have working in, in plants and animal and food systems just in general. Reporting for the Southern University Ag Center, I'm Dexter Newman.